These are the Epson Muverio BT40 smart glasses. I got a few requests to do a proper review for these, and now that I've had them for a few days, I thought I'd share my experience. For those that haven't seen them, they're glasses consisting of two OLED 1080p projectors, uh, which are aimed at a reflective region sandwiched between sections of glass. When you wear them, that region is still see-through, uh, although it's slightly tinted. Uh, there's an ambient sensor that lets the brightness adjust automatically if you enable that feature, and there's also an IMU for head tracking. If I put them on, you can see that they're not quite what you might consider discreet, particularly if you wear them with additional space to wear your normal glasses in between, or if you just like wearing them low as a heads-down display underneath whatever you're working on. I do think that they're less off-putting than Google Glass since there's no camera and no protruding parts in front of the user's face. That said, the reflective region does make it hard to see my pupils, and that could creep some people out. Attaching the sunglasses shade changes their look a bit. Whether or not it changes how, they, how discreet they are is up for debate. There are two grippy pads that help keep them in place. Like the BT335E, those pads are removable if you feel like they're grabbing your hair, but I did find these ones a little harder to get in and out. The glasses connect via a USB-C connector, and I'll get into more detail on that in a moment. If I plug them into my phone, a Galaxy S8 in this case, the glasses will either mirror my screen or enable Samsung's desktop mode, depending on what I have set up. There's a Moverio Link app in the Play Store that adds the ability to control the brightness or transparency of the image as well as the 3D mode and some other settings. There's also a big warning not to use these while driving, which once you see how easy it is to multitask while wearing them, is definitely understandable. Although I suspect the engineers did try it themselves. The image quality on these is really nice. The video is crisp and the colors are as good as I'd expect from an Epson projector. The experience doesn't feel cheap compared to having a real monitor. It is possible to have so much external light in front of you that even the brightest setting is a bit hard to see, but I think that that shouldn't be a common issue and can be worked around with that sunshade. At their optimal distance, they supposedly have about a 34 degree field of view, which isn't huge compared to, say, a VR headset, but it is quite large for its applications. Consider that the original HoloLens had a 30 degree field of view, although I can't say for sure that both companies are measuring the same way. Now, remember that I said that these are OLED projectors. That means that when you have black pixels in your video feed, those pixels in the projectors actually turn completely off, and that part of the image becomes see-through in the glasses. This lets you both have some basic augmented reality use cases, as well as some neat effects that I'll show off in a little bit. Now, if you're asking yourself, okay, but why are you still wearing them? That's because I actually have my video notes up and I'm reading them to make sure I don't forget anything as I make this video. Uh, as far as questions that I've received, I've been asked, does it plug into any USB-C port? And the short answer is no. The longer answer is the glasses require a USB-C connection that supports DisplayPort alternate mode. Uh, and while that's pretty common on flagship cell phones, it's not as common on PCs, so make sure you check ahead of time. Uh, if you have a Thunderbolt port on your computer, it does support the same features and that'll work. For everyone else, you can use a device like a UPD 2018 PCIe card uh, or a Wacom Link Plus, which can also act as an adapter. I have a UPD 2018 in my desktop right now connected to my graphics card, and it does work. Uh, I haven't personally tested the Wacom unit, but it should work to connect any HDMI or DisplayPort device, and so that would be a way to use it with consoles or anything else. Compared to the BT300 and the BT35e before it, these do not have a camera on board. While some may say that that's a downgrade, I can say from experience that I rarely had a reason to use it on those units other than to just show off that it was there. There's definitely some applications where it's important, but considering how much cost it seemed to add to the unit, and honestly how low the camera quality was, especially in low light, I don't think anyone's going to miss it. People have said, okay, but what could you use them for? I've alluded to this a bit already, but keep in mind that you can control the transparency, in turn controlling how much of your attention it's grabbing. 
And factor in that even at higher brightnesses, you can still train your eyes to see past the image and see what's in front of you. And what you end up with is a really powerful multitasking device. You can have a meeting open on the glasses to see who's talking or what material is being presented while continuing to work on your main screen, or vice versa if you wanted. It also serves as a private screen for, say, working on company documents or the like while traveling, and hopefully nothing more nefarious than that. Is it for everyone? Probably not. But think of any task where you don't need 100% of people's attention, but you also don't want their face glued to their laptop or their phone. Babysitting or security work could be easier and also more tolerable with these. Uh, guided trainings, movie subtitles, there are a few applications already out there that show up the technology pretty well. Another thing I realized is that as more and more software adds night modes and dark themes, they inherently become more compatible with the glasses since you'll get a floating view containing only important information, again because of these OLED projectors. Me personally, I'm using them for some classic game emulation, regular PC games, and plenty of YouTube. What's neat about retro games is that many of them make liberal use of large black layers in their graphics, and so you'll end up having a floating effect like I'll show you now. When you use them on a PC, you can use software like Reshade and Depth 3D to make your games render in side-by-side -side 3D. And thankfully, the sensors in this device use the standard Windows Sensor API. And I'm looking at writing a plugin for OpenTrack, which would let these be used in games supported by FreeTrack and TrackIR, as well as opening up the option to use this as a basic OpenVR or SteamVR device. Uh, tracking would still be rotational only with no positional tracking unless you added something else on top. And the glasses don't have the field of view to compete with your mainstream VR devices, but they could find an interesting niche in applications like simulators where you may have dozens of controls that you want to interact with but wouldn't be able to see while wearing a normal headset. Or similarly in situations where someone is instructing you on what to do. Now, let's talk availability. These have been really hard to come by. They're priced at $579 US, which is by no means cheap, and it seems like the product was first available in Japan, then Europe, and finally a couple of months later here in the US, but for whatever reason they're constantly being sold out. You can sign up for a stock alert directly on Epson's website where I bought these, or keep an eye on Amazon where they've been in and out of stock going into a one to two month back order before Amazon stops taking any more orders entirely. So. If you're lucky and can grab yourself a pair and see how much they inspire that minority report feeling, I'd say definitely go for it. As one final note, for owners of the older self-contained BT300, you can now find rooting and app store loading instructions for those units on XDA, so definitely check that out if you have a pair. Thanks for watching, let me know your thoughts below, and take care.